We realize all attention is on Flight 6 right now, but I want to let you know that an important milestone is coming up. In Flight 7, we will see the launch of the next generation Starship Boeing 2. SpaceX has officially verified this, raising the question, will the launch occur within this year? Furthermore, we will discuss recent developments regarding the well-being of the Crew-8 astronauts and examine the latest proposals for the impending Ariane 6 flight. Let's dive into all of this on today's episode of NR Studio. While we're still reeling from the excitement of Flight 5, SpaceX recently announced the launch date, schedule, and important updates for Flight 6. However, at the end of this announcement, SpaceX included an equally exciting teaser about Flight 7 and the new version of Starship V2. In their statement, SpaceX hinted at the changes to come, stating that future ships, starting with the vehicle plan for Test Flight 7, will feature significant improvements, including redesigned front flaps, larger propellant tanks, and next-generation tiles and secondary thermal protection layers as we continue to iterate toward a fully reusable heat shield. While they didn't directly call it a V2, the details strongly suggest it. First, let's revisit the remodeled front flaps, a hallmark of the V2 when compared to the V1. Following the flap damage observed on Flight 4, SpaceX outlined several changes, including the use of smaller, sharper flaps. The joints connecting the flaps to the ship have been refined, and the front flaps will be placed closer to the nose and windward side of the ship. These changes are intended to improve flap control during navigation and reduce stress and impact during re-entry. Furthermore, images of S-33, the first version of the V-2, reveal a slightly larger ship design with the payload door positioned higher, indicating increased fuel tank capacity. This expansion is critical to increasing Starship's operational range, allowing the ship to carry more fuel to return to Starbase, support in-orbit refueling operations, and eventually explore beyond Earth orbit. A noteworthy enhancement to the heat shield will also be incorporated. Following Flight 4, SpaceX launched a series of heat shield upgrades starting with S-30. These include new, more durable tiles, likely made of improved materials to increase durability and approach their full reusability potential. With thousands of tiles required per flight, sustainability is critical to reducing production demands. Additionally, the heat shield is equipped with a secondary layer of protection, known as an ablative layer, that provides additional durability and overall protection for the ship. With all of these improvements, Starship VV2 represents significant progress toward full sustainability and broader mission capability. This upgrade is significant with SpaceX emphasizing its significance in the latest update. Data gathered from this and future flight tests will progressively enhance the reliability of the entire Starship system as we approach the goal of complete and swift reusability. In short, all signs point to Starship V2 being the highlight. This also suggests that the final version of V1, Ship 32, will not make its flight debut. I had originally expected S-32 to be featured on Flight 7, while V-2 would debut on Flight 8. However, it seems clear that S-32 has not undergone any testing since its completion, indicating its retirement. The most likely candidate for Flight 7 is the V-2 prototype, Ace HIP-33, which was assembled in a record time of 41 days. Ship 33 arrived at the Massey test site in late October for cryogenic testing. It then returned to the production site at Mega Bay 2, where it received its engines. Currently, the engines installed are Raptor 2s, although I expect Raptor 3s to be integrated soon, especially given the V2's estimated takeoff thrust of 8,240 tons, a number that Raptor 2 could not achieve. The development of Raptor 3 is critical to the V2's maiden mission. If all goes well, S-33 will soon return to Massey for static fire testing. Once that phase is complete, it will be ready to be paired with a booster for integration testing. The question now is which booster will fly alongside S-33? Booster B-14 AV-1 completed cryogenic testing in early October and only needs static testing before it is ready for integration. Alternatively, B-15, which was apparently assembled alongside S-33 in July, could be a good match. B-15 remains securely ensconced in Mega Bay 1, with no apparent indications of testing to date. What do you think?
Will B14, despite its significant advances but older version, make the cut? Or will B15, which is unpredictable but in line with V2, be the choice? Let's discuss in the comments. SpaceX's decision on the booster for S33 will be crucial, as it directly impacts the schedule for Flight 7. If they choose the B14, Flight 7 could likely launch later this year. However, if they choose the slower developing B-15, the schedule becomes less certain. The mission profile of Flight 7 will also play a role. Elon Musk indicated that SpaceX has set its sights on capturing the vessel the following year. If they intend to have Flight 7 perform this capture, it is likely that the mission will be pushed back until next year. However, if SpaceX wants to launch this year, it is likely that the first V-2 prototype will still land in the ocean. Personally, I would prefer the prototype to land in the ocean in a more conservative manner than trying to do a direct capture. With five Starship flights this year, am I being overly optimistic? What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Either way, one thing is for sure, the V2 will lift off on Flight 7. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on SpaceX's journey. Next, let's discuss the latest update from NASA on the health of the Crew-8 astronauts. NASA has provided limited information regarding the hospitalization of a Crew-8 astronaut following the team's return to Earth from a lengthy mission aboard the ISS. On October 25, NASA revealed that an unidentified astronaut had experienced a medical issue, prompting medical personnel to transport him to Ascension Sacred Heart Hospital in Pensacola in Florida. While all four crew members were evaluated at the hospital, only three were cleared to recover and return to the Johnson Space Center, while the affected astronaut remained behind for further observation. In an update on October 26, NASA confirmed that the astronaut had been released the following day and had rejoined his crewmates at Johnson Space Center. They reported that the astronaut was in good health and ready to resume standard post-flight reconditioning protocols. While NASA avoided disclosing the astronaut's identity or specific medical details to protect their privacy, the agency assured the public that the crew member's condition was stable and did not pose any ongoing concerns. The situation highlights the unique physical and medical challenges that astronauts face after prolonged spaceflight. Spaceflight affects the human body in ways that are still not fully understood, and each mission provides new insights into how microgravity, radiation exposure, and prolonged confinement impact astronaut health. Crew-8's mission lasted an impressive 235 days, exceeding the standard six-month duration for an ISS rotation, exposing them to longer periods of stress. This extended mission duration may have contributed to the astronauts' health issues, although no details have been confirmed by NASA. In a press conference, Crew-8 member Michael Barrett acknowledged the unexpected challenges that spaceflight can present, stating, Spaceflight is still something we don't fully understand. We often find things we don't expect sometimes. He noted that this incident is an example of unforeseen factors and expressed NASA's commitment to respecting astronaut privacy while continuing to evaluate and understand the situation. Barrett also suggested that NASA might disclose further details regarding the incident following the completion of their internal review. The incident underscores NASA's stringent post-flight protocols especially after such a long mission, and highlights the agency's commitment to astronaut health. The post-flight reconditioning period includes careful monitoring and physical recovery sessions to help astronauts reacclimate to Earth's gravity, address any health complications that may arise, and ensure their readiness for future missions. As the crew of eight astronauts now undergoes the reconditioning process, the incident also serves as a reminder of the importance of health and safety advances as humanity looks toward more distant missions to the moon, Mars, and beyond. Each mission NASA conducts provides invaluable data on the effects of spaceflight on the human body, which contributes to the refinement of procedures and support for astronaut health during longer journeys to more distant destinations. The dedication of the crew of eight, who made significant contributions to ISS operations, during their 235 days in orbit, underscores the resilience and adaptability required for space exploration. Next, let's move to Europe for an update on Ariane 6, specifically its second flight. Following Ariane 6's maiden mission in July, Ariane Space announced that there would be no additional launches for the remainder of the year. A follow-up launch was originally scheduled for December, 
but has now been pushed back to mid-February, with hopes of taking place early in the month. The second mission under Arian Space's direction will include the launch of the CS-03 reconnaissance satellite for the French military, marking a significant step for the Ariane 6 program in pursuing defense-related objectives. Despite challenges on the first mission, including an issue in which the Upper Stage Auxiliary Power Unit, or APU, failed due to excessive temperature readings, ESA and Arian Space remain optimistic about the upcoming schedule. Engineers identified the problem as a software-related glitch that affected the APU's sequencing before the final deorbit burn, and the issue has since been resolved. Arian Space has elucidated that these did not constitute critical hardware complications, emphasizing that the resolution has been meticulously tested and executed. The expected arrival of Arian 6's hardware is expected to be at its launch site in French Guiana, where it will undergo preparations for flight in February. Along with the Vyjasis mission's scheduled return flight on December 3rd, this milestone underscores Arian Space's plan to build momentum in the coming months. The company is setting high expectations with the goal of conducting six Arian 6 launches next year, a goal that, if achieved, would demonstrate not only reliability, but also increase frequency in their launch schedule. This is a bold move, and only time will tell if Arian Space can meet the ambitious launch rate for 2025, especially as they establish Arian 6 as a reliable choice in the competitive global launch market. Do you believe that Arian Space can achieve this goal and carve out a more significant presence in the industry next year? Thank you for joining us. See you next time.